In this lesson, we're going to be prepping and painting the turkey legs. There's two ways you can do this. One way is to do the painting on the legs after the bird is mounted and dried. The other way to do it is to set up the legs for painting now before we actually mount the turkey. There's a couple of advantages to doing it this way. For filming reasons, you can see what I'm doing much better if we paint them now rather than after the bird's mounted. Also, it's going to be easier for you to paint the entire leg now before we mount the bird and the feathers are hiding most of the leg. The disadvantage is you have to set the form up and let the legs dry for at least a week to 10 days before you paint them. To start the painting process, we need to remove all of the pins from our legs. These are the one inch pins we put in to help hold our master blend in place. Normally these pins will have a little bit of master blend on them so I normally just discard them. Now we'll take a modeling tool and we're going to go over the legs and take off any master blend or any clay that's stuck on them anywhere. Normally there'll be a little bit of master blend at each one of your injection holes that came out of the hole a little bit. You'll need to remove that. You can see that right here. I'm just going to get rid of that. Same on this leg. Sometimes you can take each toe and just lift it up off your base. They do get stuck down from the master blend a little bit. It's good practice to get them removed and released now. Just removing that clay from both sides where we use to help stop the master blend from getting down onto our threads. You can see where this spur was broken off during the bird evaluation lesson we talked about that. We're going to keep that natural just like it is. Again, you have some of this master blend here we're just removing. Also, sometimes these legs can have some dried skin on them. If you do encounter that, you can uh, use your wire brush to just scratch some of that off. And now we'll take some compressed air and we'll blow all of the debris off of our mounting stand and we'll clean up all this dead skin that's still on these legs with the compressed air. The next step is to fill all of our pinholes from injecting the master blend with epoxy sculpt. Epoxy sculpt is mixed AB 50-50. I have some mixed up here we're going to be using. And I'm going to be using this modeling tool. This is our spoon tool from the skinning process again. Handy tool for turkey work. And also a little bit of hot water. Also a good idea to have a paper towel on hand in case you have any running water, you can just dab that away. This uh, step is pretty straightforward. You just look over your leg and anywhere there's a pinhole, 
you just fill it with a little bit of epoxy. You don't need much there, just enough to fill that pinhole in. Sometimes it can help to put it in a number of different lights. And if you have a flashlight and you shine it over each of the toes and over the leg, you'll see all the holes even a little bit more clearly. Now it's time to start painting. As you can see, we're in our walk-in paint booth. You can see the paint filters behind me. This is our table with our fireproof paper on it. If you don't have a industrial paint booth like this, you can paint in a garage or outside. You need to have good airflow when you're painting though, that's very important. We're going to be painting our head and we are going to be painting the legs on our form before we mount the bird. We're going to be doing this all in the same step here today. The paints we're going to be using are all Lifetone and Polytranspar. We're going to be using Lifetone Base Coat Sealer. We're going to be using Golden Yellow from Lifetone. Polytranspar Super Hide White. Polytranspar Blending Brown and Lifetone Gill Red. We'll be mixing some of our golden yellow with our Gill Red to take it out of the red and move it a little bit towards orange, both for the turkey head and for the legs. We'll be using a Pache H airbrush. This is a relatively simple airbrush to use and one I would definitely recommend you get and have in your arsenal if you don't have one of these already and we'll be using these jars. We're going to start with blending brown with our Pache H airbrush with a number one tip. You can see I'm wearing gloves for this process. Just testing a little bit on my gloves. You can turn that cone to adjust the amount of flow. The objective here is to spray over any areas that are slightly discolored. That would include any of our epoxy repairs, any area that seemed like it's a little white, like on some of the scales on the legs, we're just trying to blend that in. Also, if some of the clay got up on the toes, we're hitting that a little bit. Up on the shaft of the leg, it normally discolors a little bit towards white. I'm just hitting over that a little bit. When we put our red and yellow mix over that, or our orange, that'll blend it the rest of the way in. That's why they call this blending brown. It works great for this. Also works really good for fish work. Again, we're just repeating that process on the back leg. As you turn it in different lights, you can see more repairs you'll need to make with your blending brown. Again, up on the shaft of the leg, spraying a little bit on our clay. That can just help blend that in when we put our skin and feathers around the drumstick area. You don't want to go too heavy with this. You want to start out fairly light. And if you feel like you need a little bit more, you can put a little more on. You just want to get rid of that whitish look. I'm spraying a little bit on that busted off spur too, just to blend that in. And you can see that white area on the shaft we got rid of.
spraying the pads a little bit. You can get a little darker there. After the black brown is complete, if you wanted to, you could mist the leg with a little bit of super high white. If you wanted a slightly lighter looking leg, I don't particularly like that look. I like a leg that's just a little bit darker, so we won't be using any super high white on these legs. Now we're going to use our gill red and yellow mix. And open up the spray a little bit more and we're going to spray it from a little bit more of a distance and we're trying to get at even coverage and complete coverage with this. We're going to be spraying over the shaft of the leg and the toes. This is a five to one mix. It's four parts of the golden yellow and one part of the gill red. It's not an exacting mix. You can adjust it. I would recommend testing that before you spray it on the leg. You don't want it too red and you don't want it too orange. You want something in between that. Each set of turkey legs vary. So as you're doing this, if one set of legs you're doing on one turkey looks slightly different than the next, it's okay. Some are lighter, some are darker. If you do a search on the internet and take a look at live turkey legs, you'll see that. So we're just misting over our blending brown repair area. You can see how that's just melting into the leg and you can't see it anymore. If it seems like some of that blending brown is still coming through a little bit, you can hit it with some more of your gill red and yellow mix. Spraying on the back of the shaft, cleaning up on the back side of the toes a little bit. Again, you can see how I'm spinning it in the paint booth. Every time I turn it, it gets in a different light and I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. You want to have complete coverage with this. If one area looks like it's lighter than the other, you want to come back and match it up. You see I looked at it in a little bit different light and I saw something I had to catch up. Now we're using our base coat sealer and this is going to be our top coat. Base coat sealer is not a gloss, it's a sealer. So it might look shiny as you're working on it, but that will dull up quickly. We're going to be giving it three light coats and you want to have it dry at least 10 minutes between coats. You want 100% coverage with this. This is what's going to protect the paint and stop it from scratching or chipping off. Again, I'm turning it in different lights and I can see areas that I miss. Another trick with this, if you need to dull it up right away, you can back off and kind of mist over it with your base coat sealer. And that'll dull it up a little bit more quicker if you want to take a little bit of that shine off. But just from mounting this turkey, we're going to be taking the shine off just from handling it. Also, if you need to, you can paint right over your base coat sealer. If you see an area you missed, it doesn't hurt anything. And after you paint over it, you do not have to put more base coat sealer on if you don't want to. This is going to give you a very durable leg.